Welcome everybody to the Save the Frogs webinar on Costa Rica's amphibians. Thanks a lot for being here. This is one of the most well attended Save the Frogs webinars of all time. So I'm really happy about that. Happy to have Victor Acosta Chavez on the line. He's going to be talking for up to 45 minutes all about the amphibians from Costa Rica talking about diversity of amphibians and the threats that they face. I met Victor in 2015. He helped organize a full day Save the Frogs educational event that took place just outside of San Jose. And I also went out frogging with him in 2015 and again in 2017. I sent out a link in the chat. I'll probably send it again in a few minutes. I put up some photos from that frogging expedition. Save the Frogs has a Costa Rica eco tour taking place. Starts at the end of June, goes for 10 or 11 days. Hopefully you can attend and I'll send, I'll send a chat for that too or go to savethefrogs.com slash eco tours. Click through to the Costa Rica eco tour and Vic Door will be our amphibian guide on that tour. So we'll have uh, two tour leaders and an amphibian guide. So three experts on amphibians, Costa Rica, wildlife, environmental education. So tons of knowledge will be there on that Costa Rica eco tour starting, I believe, June 29th, 2019 going for about 10 days. So I'm going to turn it over to Victor and he will tell you a bit about himself and all about the frogs and other amphibians of Costa Rica. Victor, feel free to turn your video on or just share your screen, whatever you want to do and unmute yourself as well. Okay. So thank you everybody. All right. Enjoy. Um, sorry for my English. Of course, my language is Spanish, but I'm going to try to do my best. Okay. So first, I'm going to talk a little about me. I am a biologist. I studied in the University of Costa Rica and the National University also in Costa Rica. And I like uh, birds. I like frogs. And many other animals and ecosystems in the country. Um, usually I go into the field looking for different species, mainly birds and frogs, salamanders, and also reptiles. Today I'm going to show a little of my photographies about um, amphibians mainly, just because it's, it's a Say the Frogs webinar, right? So first I want to talk a little about my country. I know that some of you are from different countries. Maybe some of you have visited Costa Rica, uh, but for other people, it's a, a place that they don't, they don't know, or they don't, have never been here, or they have listened probably the name because of the World Cup some years ago, or because of the publicity that the country uh, have been made about tourism since the, the, the 50s. So where Costa Rica is located, um, we are in Central America, very close to, to Mexico and to um, Colombia. Uh, Costa Rica is uh, very small. We are between Nicaragua and Panama. And we have a border with uh, Ecuador and Colombia also in the ocean. So we are here, I am talking very close to San Jose, the capital. Uh, about Costa Rica, we are a democratic country. We are about 5 million people. Uh, we don't have army since uh, 1948, but it's very good for us. Our size is very, very small. Uh, just a little more than 50,000 square kilometers. But we are the largest, larger country in Central America 
when we uh, take account of the ocean, we are 10 times bigger in the ocean. Our highest peak is about 3,800 uh, 3, meters. Um, the 24, 25% of the country uh, is protected by wildlife areas. Uh, about the 60% of the country is covered with, with tree um, and forest. And the main activity is tourism. Okay, so I am talking right now from Heredia. Uh, in the in the center of the country. Uh, we are very small, about the 0.03% of the earth surface. And if you see, uh, we are not <laughs> very big, but we, we have the 3.5% of the world's known biodiversity, but it's a lot for our small uh, area. Uh, about amphibians, Costa Rica is the number uh, 21, but it's very good. We, ha we have about 214 species. Uh, as you see, the first country is Brazil, Colombia, Peru, Ecuador. Uh, and we are uh, in a good position, I think, uh, understanding that we are very, very small. Also, we have a very high density of amphibians and other vertebrates in the country. Several times bigger than other countries as Mexico, Colombia, or Brazil, or Indonesia. Um, Costa Rica, this biodiversity uh, is the result of the very uh, complex topography that we have. We have several mountain ridge the Guanacaste mountain ridge with some active volcanoes. We have the central uh, mountain ridge. Uh, I live uh, right here in this valley. And also we have the Talamanca uh, mountain ridge. What uh, this week, a friend, uh, another herpetologist from Costa Rica discovered and is, is publishing that is the most complex uh, mountain ridge system in the world and uh, have it, uh, about 200 species of amphibians. So it's uh, among the, the 10 most uh, diverse uh, mountain ridge in the world when we are talking about amphibians. And we share this, this, this mountain ridge with Panama. We have also other small mountain ridge and all these uh, microclimbs generates uh, many uh, endemic species, especially from of amphibians. Costa Rica have 12 uh, life zones. Um, we have the lowlands from zero to 500 meters, the pre-montane 500 to about uh, 1,500 1, meters. We have the lower montane, what we also call cloud forest, and on the top, we have the mountain, the oak forest, and subalpine or paramo. So this is related with the precipitation, the, the rain that falls in Costa Rica. The rain is placed in Costa Rica is right here, in the center, but also in the lowlands. And the uh, driest place is the yellow color area, is the dry forest. So just, I'm gonna be uh, showing this image uh, well, well, we're talking. Uh, so first, what an amphibian is, uh, you know that amphibians are vertebrates that have uh, four fingers in the in the hand, five, five toes in the in the feet. Uh, they don't have any structure like feathers or scales or hair in the skin. So they have poison glandular glands, and they have also uh, mucus glands, and there are many other characteristics, but in general, uh, we have three main groups living uh, right now in the, in the planet. The Anura, the frogs and, and toads. Hypnofiona or Sicilians, they look more like a snake. Actually, the Latin name means a nude snake, but they are amphibians. And we have the uh, caudata, the salamanders, what uh, 
means that they have a tail when they are adults. All the amphibians, I think now we have 8,000 species in the world, and all the amphibians are mainly carnivorous, and they inhabit most of the continents and most of the islands in the planet, but they don't uh, explore, at least uh, as my knowledge, the ocean. So they are limited to uh, freshwater areas and, and the continent. In Costa Rica, we have the three groups. So what is the amphibian richness in Costa Rica? We have uh, about 150 species of, of frogs and toads. We have uh, 54 salamanders. Uh, we have eight species of Sicilians. In total, we have about 214 species, what is very good for a very small country. So I am going to talk a little about the different life zones and some example of amphibians that we can find in those areas. In some cases, uh, the species can be found in more than one uh, type of life zone. But I, I select uh, the species uh, according what if they are common or not in that life zone. So first I'm gonna talk about the tropical dry forest. Probably is the most underrated uh, ecosystem in the Mesoamerican area, but also is the most in danger because when Spanish uh, conquerors came to Latin America, they burned most of the dry forest because they couldn't burn the cloud and the rainforest and they, they introduce cattle and they start doing uh, other agricultural activities. So most of the dry forest in the neotropic area is lost. So now we are gonna talk about the dry forest, the yellow area in the map. So the dry forest in Costa Rica is very spectacular. Uh, you can find the most beautiful beaches, uh, worldwide, worldwide famous. Uh, because of the, the spectacular beach and also you can find mangroves like like the one you can see here and you can find the uh, tropical dry forest what is a short forest about 20 meters uh, high very short compared with the rainforest but in the dry season mostly most of the forest is dry uh, sometimes you can find cactus you can find uh, similarities with a desert, but during the rainy season, it's totally green and full of life. So every year, every year uh, right now in this moment, we are starting the rainy season. So the first species I wanna talk is the biggest amphibian in Costa Rica, the cane toad, you know, it's a plague in Australia and other places. Can be more bigger than a kilo, uh, the females and probably it's one of the most common amphibians in Costa Rica. Unfortunately, it's disappearing from some areas, especially cities, but you can find it in open areas and forests around the, around the country, especially in the dry forest. Also, uh, this is a very special species from the dry forest, uh, the Mexican uh, drum toad. It's a species that lives uh, underground most of the year and during this month, with the beginning of the rainy season and the stronger uh, storms, thousands of them uh, go out for laying eggs. That species is the only amphibian in Costa Rica that belongs to the branch of the old world amphibians. It's now a new, new, new batrachia. Uh, so it's very special because the distribution of the species is from Sonora Desert uh, to the north of Costa Rica, only in the dry forest. Uh, if you wanna see, you have to come uh, this month and wait for the day that the thousand of drunk toads go out for, for laying eggs in the, in the dry forest. Uh, we also have the chip frog and the tungara. Uh, chip frogs are common in, in the dry forest when it's rainy you can find them laying eggs in company sometimes of the drunk toad. And the tungara 
is one of the most studied frogs uh, about the behavior of uh, the males when they are mating uh, because they produce two elements and one of the elements uh, is interesting because it's made for uh, distract the females from the call of the other males. Also, we have three frogs in the dry forest. Uh, some of them are not very colorful, but they are uh, loud, very noisy, and common everywhere. And we have the Mexican tree frog in all the dry forests, and the milk tree frog, what is uh, one of the most or best distributed amphibians in the neotropics. Very toxic, by the way. Uh, also, we have uh, Lepidodactylus, they are similar to true frogs, but they are not true frogs. They live uh, related with ponds, especially. You can find thousands, hundreds calling at the same time in pastures or, or wetlands in the dry forest. And we also have true frogs like the leopard frog, the little bates for ready. Uh, what is, that is related with the leopard frog you have in the United States in case you are from, from the United States. Uh, also, this is a special species where we are going to talk uh, at the end of the presentation. Is the uh, Crauglastor ranoides, was the most common species in Costa Rica uh, in the 70s and 80s. Now it is uh, in danger and only can, can be found in the driest forest in Costa Rica because of the uh, BD fungus if you know the fungus that is killing the amphibians around the world, that fungus uh, cannot be virulent, cannot kill the population in uh, dry conditions. So only that population remains in Costa Rica, in the driest area of Guanacaste, but disappear from most of the country. And in the past, as I told you, was the most common species. Uh, we're going to talk a little more about it. But I want to talk uh, about probably the most biodiverse ecosystem in, for amphibians and for other vertebrates and plants in Costa Rica, the tropical moist or wet rainforest. Uh, they are different, but for this presentation, we are going to mix uh, all this area. The blue and the, gr and the light green in the Caribbean side and the Pacific side is the ecosystem we're going to talk about it. In Costa Rica, we have uh, the mountain ridge dividing the country in two. So we have some species that only inhabit the Caribbean side and some species that only exist in the Pacific, especially here in the Osa Peninsula, a place that National Geographic and other organizations have, have said is the most intense a biological place on earth. I don't know, but it's what they say. So we're going to talk about this rainforest. The rainforest in Costa Rica is very beautiful, spectacular. You can find trees uh, very high, 70 meters even, 50 meters. They have several strata. We have the, the understory, uh, and we have the, <clears throat> the canopy layers and the, uh, the ground. So the amphibians uh, here can inhabit uh, the different strata. Usually we can observe the species that are on the ground or in the understory, but in very rare occasions, we can find the canopy species that also usually are, are the most spectacular species. So I'm going to show you some of them. Uh, in the rainforest, here in Costa Rica, the water is uh, probably the main element, right? Uh, the the, uh, the <clears throat> monkeys and other mammals are common here. And as you see here, um, there are very large trees everywhere in the, in the rainforest. Also, we have volcanoes, like the Arenal volcano that uh, we're going to visit in the ecotour that is in the middle of a uh, rainforest. And also in the Caribbean side and Pacific, uh, we have beach that uh, meets the rainforest and actually the, 
both ecosystems coexist and, and depend each other. Uh, we have here uh, the Dr. Krieger in one of our expeditions playing music in the middle of the rainforest. So it's a very, very beautiful place and quiet place. And first we're going to talk about this group, the purple Sicilians. In Costa Rica we have eight species of Sicilians. Most of the species look like this. Uh, some of the species are very rare to find because they live uh, underground. And most of the species have been found by accident. Um, when people is uh, building or digging uh, with machines or with shovels on the ground, and sometimes they can find uh, different uh, Sicilians. In Costa Rica, uh, we, are, we have two families. And they are viviparous. Uh, they don't lie, uh, lie any egg. They are more even uh, more than mammals, than an amphibian, I could say, or frogs. And they are carnivorous, especially uh, they feed on beetle larva and airworms. And they are predated by coral snakes. That is very interesting. Uh, also, we have salamanders in the rainforest. For example, this beautiful uh, Alvarado's uh, mushroom tongue salamander that is very rare to find. Um, they have very big uh, food compared with, with other salamander genus in Costa Rica. We have three genus here in Costa Rica. Uh, most of the species are pretty difficult or rare to observe. This is one of the most common salamanders that we can see in Costa Rica. Probably we could see in the Cotur, the Bolitoglossa striatula. Very common in the rainforest, especially in the Caribbean side. And in the Pacific side, this is another common species we could find, the Allen salamander, uh, with the white uh, neck. Also, we have toads. For example, the rainforest toad, Mycelium melanochlorus, a very common species in the ground. Uh, that toad inhabits the left litter layer, and it's very common, especially when during the day, when where you are looking for uh, left litter frogs, usually you can find the rainforest toads. Probably that is the most common species in Costa Rica right now, and for sure we're gonna see it many. Uh, common rain frogs. They are polymorphic, so they can be in different colors and sizes. <laughs> uh, but it's one of the best distributed species today. And also, uh, some research have discovered that, that that species is a vector of the BD fungus in Costa Rica. So the species uh, have have no problems dealing with it, with the infection produced by the BD fungus. Uh, another common species we have in the rainforest, and probably we're going to see, is the pygmy rain frog, the Pestimantis pridens, very small. And uh, in the Caribbean, especially, we have the uh, Hippopacus pictiventris, the Caribbean chip frog. What is quite rare, uh, you have to, to be lucky to be in the forest, especially in ponds. And after rains and depending on the moon uh, also, you can find several or you, or you cannot see anyone. So that species lives underground and only under very specific conditions, they, they go out for laying eggs and calling. Another popular species in the rainforest is the uh, smoky jungle frog. It's the second bigger amphibian in Costa Rica. They can eat even a chicken or they can eat snakes, uh, other frogs, and anything they can, they can grab. Usually they live in holes, as you see in the picture, and when you are close, they enter and escape in the hole. Uh, another very common and beautiful species we have in Costa Rica in both in both uh, versions 
is the old glass tree frog, Dendrosophus ebracatus, one of the most studied frogs also uh, in bioacoustics. There are many work made in the 80s, and many things we know about uh, the bioacoustic of neotropical amphibians was made uh, with that species. Uh, another very common species we have uh, in Costa Rica in both version is the mask tree frog, Smilis cafeota. It's a Mesoamerican genus of tree frogs that are common here in Costa Rica. They have this beautiful mask. They can be green, they can be brown, or they can, they can be green and brown. Uh, that species, uh, the, the Costa Rican people call it a, um, cow soul because the the calling is similar to the sound produced by a cow so when people was walking in, in the night and they were looking the pasture because that's busy likes uh, open areas and they listen something like a cow but there was nothing and probably was a mastery frog so for sure we're going to see some in the in the tour uh, one of the specials uh, I hope we could see in the tour is the red web tree frog, Buana rufitella. It's a South American genus that we have in Costa Rica. In Costa Rica, we have uh, the North, the Mesoamerican genus, and some uh, South American genus from the Amazon and from the Andes. This is why we have a very beautiful and, and rare and uh, complex uh, diversity of amphibians. Uh, one of my favorites, um, one of the rarest species you can see in Mesoamerica, that species, uh, the crown tree frog, you can find it from Mexico to Panama. But here in Costa Rica, there are some rainforests where there are uh, breeding programs and also uh, there are a population that are identified, so you can uh, observe the species, but usually it's very rare because they live in the canopy and they need uh, dead trees, dead logs, uh, so they, they wait that the rain uh, fill the holes with water in the dead logs and they go and lay eggs, so they are very, very rare to, to spot in the forest the crown tree frog, uh, one of the Costa Rican specialties. Also, probably the most famous frog in the world and probably the most famous frog, frog in Costa Rica. And most of the people that come to Costa Rica come uh, looking for the red-eyed tree frog, Agalignis calidrius. Um, it's a very common species in Caribbean and Pacific. The most beautiful individuals you can see, uh, you can see them in the Caribbean side. And uh, I know that in the Eco Tour, probably we're going to see many of those. However, they are spectacular, beautiful. The Latin name, name means uh, nymph of the forest, forest nymph. Uh, probably one of the most beautiful frogs we have here in Costa Rica. It's the tiger or splendid leaf frog, Lucevilla silvia, that I expect we could observe in the eco tour. Uh, it's a very big tree frog. Uh, there are only three species of that genus in the world. In Costa Rica, we have two, Lucevilla calcarifer and Lucevilla silvia. Uh, they are canopy species, very difficult to spot and very endangered. In the rainforest, uh, especially in the gallery forest or, or river forest, we have the uh, glass frogs. So I'm going, to, I'm going to show you some species. Probably the most popular now is the ghost uh, glass frog, Sacatamia ilix. If you see the pattern that they have in the eye, it's very beautiful, very popular now for photographers. Also, we have the granular glass frog. Beautiful uh, orange eyes and uh, white uh, spots in the skin. Another uh, nice species, the Chiriqui glass frog, 
Tratu y la pulverata. Um, seems like someone put some uh, flavor on the frog. So th this is what the pulverata means, like dust, dusty. Very beautiful premontane and lower uh, species. Uh, one of the most spectacular grass frog we have is the Valerius glass frog. Um, if you see, they look like uh, egg, uh, like like eggs. So when predators, as wasps or uh, grasshopper, come to the egg mass, sometimes the the father uh, keeps uh, quiet, looking like another egg mass. And when the wasps come to eat the eggs, they kick the predator with the legs. There are some videos in YouTube you can you can spot about it. Uh, very interesting. The ninja frogs of Costa Rica. We have uh, 14 species of glass frogs. Most of them uh, you can find it in the rainforest. For example, the very rare Talamanca glass frog and the common spiny glass frog that I hope we could see in the eco tour. Some glass frogs uh, lay eggs um, up in the leaf, in the upper uh, face of the leaf, but the um, <coughs> spiny glass frog prefers to lay eggs under the, the leaf. Also, uh, some of the most popular species of frogs we have here in Costa Rica are the poison frogs or poison dart frogs. Some people say uh, we shouldn't say dart frogs because in Costa Rica the species that, that exist were no use for, for this purpose. I really don't know, but um, we have two species. In the Pacific side, we have the glanular poison frog. Of a granulifera. As you see the skin, you can see the poison glands everywhere. And in the Caribbean side, one of the most common amphibians in Costa Rica, especially in Sarapiqui area and Arenal area, places that we are going to visit in the Eco Tour, we have the strawberry poison frog, of Agapumilio. Also, if you go to Panama, to Boca del Toro area, you can see many other morphs of the strawberry poison frog or blue jeans poison frog, very different. Uh, they can be yellow, they can be green, they can be red, blue. But in Costa Rica, uh, they are more like this morph, like the blue jeans or totally red. So we could see that the Ophaga pumilio is the vertebrate with the uh, highest polymorphism of any vertebrate. Another special and popular species in Costa Rica uh, is the green and black poison frog. In the Caribbean side, we have this morph, mainly green, more poisonous. In the Pacific, we have this other morph that is more endangered, but is less poisonous, more black, darker, and usually smaller than the Caribbean uh, species, uh, Caribbean individuals. Dendrobates auratus. And also we have these rocket frogs, for example, the Aloates talamansi. They have a similar behavior to poison frogs. They are the, the urinal. They live in the under, uh, <coughs> sorry, in the in the uh, left litter layer. They can climb. For example, the the green and black poison frog can climb until uh, to the canopy. Uh, but the rocket frogs mainly live in the in the in the left litter layer, and they are not really poisonous. Uh, one interesting thing is that uh, this family, Aromobatidae, have uh, metallic pigments in the eye. But the Dendrobatid family, the family of the true poison frogs, they lack of this uh, metallic. Uh, structures in the eye. Now we're going to talk a little about the middle elevation tropical forest. Uh, it's all the 
pink, dark green uh, areas, especially, and also the wine color areas. So the middle elevation, we also call it foothills or cloud forests in some occasions. Not all the middle elevations are cloud forests, but sometimes we call it pre-montane forests. For example, San Jose, the capital, and the surrounding cities are in the middle elevation. Also, the middle elevation sometimes is considered the most diverse elevation for amphibians in Costa Rica because you can, you can have the species from the lowlands and you can have some species from the uh, higher elevations. So middle elevation, uh, you see uh, here I am, I was walking in one of the cloud forests I have close to my house, uh, 20 kilometers from my house. Um, the vegetation is uh, very dense. The canopy is not very high, it's about 30 meters, but the complexity uh, is very high. We have big national parks that are in this uh, middle elevation. Sometimes uh, we have spectacular ponds in the middle of the jungle, in the middle of the cloud forest, where you can find very rare species of frogs uh, breeding. Um, as you see, the cloud forest is uh, usually is cloudy, uh, foggy, sometimes rainy. Um, Chile also, temperatures are about uh, 16 to 20 Celsius. And it's the, the home of the most spectacular bird we have in Costa Rica, the resplendent quetzal, the national bird of Guatemala. In Costa Rica, we have very good populations of the resplendent quetzal in most of the highlands. So I hope also in the eco tour we could spot some resplendent quetzals. Uh, the uh, salamanders are very common in the cloud forest. Here in Costa Rica, we only have one family of salamanders, the pletodontid salamander, the lungless salamanders. And most of the species that we have here are, are the mushroom tongues salamanders. So for example, this is the barba volcano mushroom tongue salamander. It's endemic of Costa Rica, very small animal. I have uh, worked mainly in cloud forest for some years. Um, this is one of the plates of one of my papers. Um, as you see here in the cloud forest, we have very rare toads. For example, the mouse toad, that is a diurnal toad. Only you can, you can find 40, 20 uh, of them uh, walking in the left litter in the early morning. But not at night, but it's very interesting. And they cannot jump or, or like a, usually you can, you can see a frog. This is why they call it mouse toad. We also have the green climbing toad. The green climbing toads are the only arboreal toad species we have in Costa Rica. You can find it in several elevations, but in the cloud forest, they are common. And sometimes you can uh, wait for strong rains and look in the ponds and you can find the males uh, calling with a beautiful orange uh, vocal sac. Also, we have the uh, emerald glass frog. It's the only species in Costa Rica with this bone uh, uh, that they, the males uh, have for fightings. So usually they fight when they are uh, selecting a perch for calling. Um, and we have many species in Costa Rica of um, direct development frogs. Those are very uh, small, brown, uh, not really colorful, but they are mainly cryptic species that live in the leaf litter layer. And they lay eggs uh, in the leaves. The eggs um, <coughs> develop inside the, the tadpole. So they don't need uh, ponds or water sources. And after some days, you can find very tiny, tiny uh, frogs that start growing and growing until they are adults. Most of the frogs in Costa Rica are of this type, Crowgastoridae and uh, Straumantidae family, especially. Um, in the cloud forest, we also have uh, 
that species the it's moila uh, uh, tree frogs we have true frogs also the leopard frogs and we have the species of tree frog that only inhabit bromelia bromelia uh, they are like pineapples that are in the canopy so those frogs live all the life the the cycle of their life inside the, the bromelia one of, um, in my research for my master thesis was uh, in, to test how the moon uh, affect the breeding of uh, several uh, cloud forest species that in the past actually they were considered uh, mute that they, they didn't produce any any call but it was not true the thing is that during the full moon days or days where the moon is uh, well illuminated they 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 made but for example in new moon um it's, they live in the canopy and they are quiet they don't produce any any coal so it's very rare to to find one of those so it's interesting i think it's the first time someone have test this hypothesis in health forest i am uh, finishing to publish this paper uh, we only ha also have uh, the highlanding frog, uh, very common species that lives in all the vegetation, very small but noisy. They sound like a metallic uh, bell. Also, we have the Fleischmann's glass frog, probably the best uh, distributed species in the neotropic and the most common species. Very common even in San Jose and uh, in the cities, uh, only uh, close to the uh, river uh, river forest. As you see the glass frogs, you check the the belly. You can observe sometimes organs and they are transparent, especially that that genus Ialinobatrachium, that means a glass frog in Latin. Uh, another spectacular cloud forest species is the red eye stream frog, Turmanoila rufioculis, that we can spot for sure in the ecotour, especially in, in rivers and the small streams. Uh, this is a mainly endemic Costa Rican species. There are few populations in Panama, but the main population of that species is in San Jose and Heredia and Cartago here in, in the Central Valley of Costa Rica. And that species was, thing, was extinct uh, until the, the year 2003. Uh, during the, the, before the, the 90s, that species was widespread everywhere in the Central Valley in Costa Rica. The blue side leaf rock, Agalinis anai, also known as coffee field leaf rock, uh, but after the BD attack, the Costa Rican population of frogs, that species disappeared. And today, fortunately, the species is recovering in the in the country. But the 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 thing is that it's recovering, especially in cities where the rivers are polluted, so the fungus cannot survive. But in the pristine areas, for example, Monte Verde, uh, one of the most famous cloud forests here in Costa Rica that the species is, is still uh, disappear. So it's an uh, interesting uh, phenomena that we are observing here with the blue side leaf frog. Again, a cloud for the species. Uh, one of the most spectacular cloud for the species are the early queen toads. For example, the variable early queen toad before the 80s, uh, the 90s, sorry, was probably the most common toad in San Jose. Uh, after the, the fungus, the BD fungus attacked the populations. Uh, all the populations over 2,000 meters high disappear in the Neotropic, including Costa Rica. Today, we have some population, especially uh, below the 1,000 meters, especially in the Pacific side. Uh, for example, this, this photography is uh, was made by another uh, biologist 
uh, in, in a lowland. Very beautiful. Um, that species can change in color and uh, if you go to Panama, they have very different morphs. This is why it's a variable uh, species. Probably the most famous species and the one I don't have any photo because it was extinct when, when I was a, a baby uh, in the 2000, in the 19, uh, 1988, sorry, uh, is the Monteverde golden toad. Probably the most famous uh, amphibian uh, or more search amphibian in the world uh, only exists in the Monteverde uh, Cloud Forest Preserve. Um, but 30 years, 30 years ago, uh, disappeared the population. And at least for my knowledge, uh, no one has a find another. So it's very sad. Uh, probably was the one of the iconic uh, Costa Rican species that we lost. Um, thank you for the photography to, to these people. Um, fortunately, uh, we have the Holdridge toad. The Holdridge toad was declared extinct in 2008 by the UCN Red List, but some colleagues uh, rediscovered the population. Uh, the population is in uh, Heredia, the, the town I live. It's the most uh, or the closest relative to the Monteverde's uh, golden toad. Um, sometimes people call that species the Lazarus toad. And I have the, uh, I have the luck of work with that species. So I have been doing some research for four or yeah, five, four years ago. And we have been evaluating the habitat requirements of that species. Um, we are also preparing a paper about it. But um, I'm going to talk later about the conservation, conservation issues that that species is facing. Another uh, cloud forest species that we have recovered is the Monteverde stream frog, uh, Ismoila regularis, uh, a species that we thought was extinct, and now is there are several populations around the country. Finally, we're gonna talk about the mountain forest and subalpine paramo, the highest peaks in Costa Rica. Um, the red, all the red, and the black in the map. So the mountain forest is mainly dominated by oak. We have two species of oaks in, in the mountain forest. Uh, this forest is very beautiful. Uh, I could say that looks like the Lord of the Rings or something <laughs> forest. You can see very old and beautiful oak trees and uh, another trees especially related with the North American species and also bamboo in the understory. And for example, one of the unique species we have in this ecosystem is the Valle del Silencio or Silence Valley being frog discovered in 2009 by some colleagues. Uh, as you see, the oaks here in Costa Rica can be 1,000 years old. There are oaks that are about 2,000 years old. And in this ecosystem, the diversity of frogs is low but we have a very good diversity of salamanders. Uh, in the subalpine paramo, it's the highest elevation in Costa Rica. We don't have any paramo. We have this uh, vegetation related with the vegetation of uh, paramos in the Andes. Costa Rica have the northern paramos in, in America. So th this vegetation is dominated by plants related with the grass, especially and bamboo and also bromelia. For example, the puya uh, is a bromelia related with the pineapple that grows in the, in the paramos in South America and Costa Rica. Uh, and I show this picture because uh, those uh, bromelias are habitat for some species of salamanders that climb for this bromelia looking for the flowers. As you see, they're very small blue flowers 
and they they are looking for pollinators. Um, in the past, in the 90s, 92, uh, there was a study that uh, described that you can you can spot 20 salamanders living in one of those puyas. Um, and uh, this is a view of the Paramo area in Cerro de la Muerte. Uh, that means a mountain of death, <laughs> um, in the highest uh, highway you can cross in Costa Rica. So in those areas, we have especially salamanders. For example, the most common species in that area, Cerro de la Muerte, is Politoglosa pes rubra, the red leg, most wrong tongue, most wrong tongue salamander that is polymorphic and in the past was considered the, the same species that the supalmata, the central uh, valley or volcano, central volcanoes, uh, salamander. But today we know that they are different species. Both are endemic of Costa Rica. Unfortunately, uh, there are some studies from the 80s where they could find 100 salamanders by 100 square meters. Um, today, uh, you can find zero. You can find less than one salamander in one 100 uh, square meters, what is very sad. Uh, as you know, salamanders are declining in Europe and United States, but also in the neotropics. Uh, this is another species from Cerro La Muerte, the Politoglosa cerroensis, very rare. I was lucky to, to spot that individual 10 years ago. And also lucky to find the Robinson's most room tongue salamanders. Robinson was the first herpetologist, American herpetologist that came to Costa Rica and teach most of the batracologists in, in Costa Rica. That species was described in 2009. In those areas, we don't have many frogs. Most of the frogs we have in the highlands are this kind of direct development, uh, rubber frogs uh, that lay eggs on the left litter. So finally, we're gonna talk about the conservation threats we have in Costa Rica. Uh, mainly, one of the main problems we have sorry, is the unplanned urban development in the Central Valley, especially where the population is um, very dense. We are about 2.5 million living in, in the center of Costa Rica. Uh, and the rivers are polluted. Uh, sometimes we lost the, the river cover because of, of course, uh, People uh, claim those those areas for building houses. It's illegal, but people still do it. It's difficult to control, and um, this produces the loss of habitat of many species. So we lost coffee fields, we lost pastures. Now we have uh, buildings, we have uh, houses and highways. And most of the amphibians in the Central Valley are extinct in several towns. And in very rare and isolated uh, areas, you can spot very few species, including the, the blue side uh, leaf frog that is considered vulnerable. Uh, as you know, Costa Rica, unfortunately, before the, the 90s, uh, has a very high level of deforestation was, uh, our country was one of the most deforested countries uh, in the world, but it's very sad. From the middle of the 20th century, we lost most of our, of our primary forests. Fortunately, after the boom in ecotourism in the 90s, we recovered some forests, especially in some areas like the Nicoya Peninsula. Um, and now uh, the, cover, the forest is recovering. Um, the thing is that it's not the same primary forest that we had, but I hope in 1,000 years, we could recover this biodiversity. Uh, sad that we are still losing forests. However, especially because of the, the monocultures, 
uh, as you can see in this map from this year, uh, we are losing forests. The Nicaragua is losing forests, but it's very, very sad for us because it's affecting what happens in Nicaragua and Panama is affecting Costa Rica and, and what's happening in Costa Rica is affecting the, the neighbors. Uh, we have this problem, the monocultures, uh, uh, after the uh, the tourism, the main activity is the monoculture of pineapple. Costa Rica now is the number one uh, producer of pineapples. Pineapples are very, very bad for environment. As you can see in this picture, they destroy the soil, they pollute the water, they destroy the forest, um, produce a uh, barriers for species as amphibians, for example, that they don't, they can um, go far. And if you put this kind of desert in the middle of the jungle, it's not good. And this is a very th uh, thing that I am not proud of, but is that Costa Rica takes first place in the world for the use of pesticides. Of course, because we have this very high uh, diversity of insects and things that can become plagues and here it's difficult to regulate this. So we use about 17 kilos by hectare, but it's crazy. For especially for produce pineapple and bananas. Right? So if you can avoid buy pineapples uh, from Costa Rica and bananas, uh, you are saving the frogs. Uh, we have the BD wave, the wave of the fungus that in the middle of the 80s attacked the Tilaran Cordillera where Monteverde is located, just killed the Monteverde golden frog, golden toad, sorry, and moved during the 90s across the country. And now, today, entering the Darien area, probably the Amazon of the Central America. Uh, in the border between Panama and, and Colombia. So this wave was killing most of the amphibian populations, especially in the highlands during this time, but it's very bad. Uh, in the lowlands uh, also, this fungus and the global warming uh, change in the dynamic of the forest. Uh, for example, uh, the number of, of the, the amount of left litter that is being produced and the time that this, this left litter uh, keeps in the ground is affecting many population of frogs. So in La Selva, one of the places I think uh, we're gonna visit the ecotour or, or surroundings, um, the amphibians and reptiles are declining every year uh, in a very high high uh, rate. Even when the BD fungus is not really the problem here, but the global warming is. Also in the Premontane forest from the South Pacific also, we have seen declines in many species of, especially left litter frogs. Again, uh, because of this phenomena, the global warming and the change in the forest phenology. Uh, I compared data from my professors in Tapantí National Park during the 90s and data that I took in the surrounding areas of that national park uh, about the density of this uh, rubber frog. And what I found was terrible. Uh, if you see in the 90s, you can find 60 uh, or very high uh, numbers of that frog. Before April of the 94, uh, we had uh, El Nino, uh, you know, Enos uh, climatic uh, oscillation. And after this, uh, most of the population of many uh, small rubber frogs in the cloud forest declined. And now you can see Few, few individuals um, in, the, in the same ecosystem. So the global warming is, is affecting some population of, of amphibians that survive the, the wave of the BD fungus. 
this is a paper that is going to be published probably the next week in this journal, the Tropical Biology Journal. Um, and we compare data again from the middle 90s with, with data we took in the early 2010s. And what we found is a totally change in the diversity, uh, richness, and abundance of frogs in the cloud forests. Um, we can see, for example, the Craugastro crassidigitus, the rubber frog, that in the 90s was uh, uh, disappeared. And now um, that species is the most common uh, species in this cloud forest, as you can see here. So in the 90s, zero. Now it's the dominant species, and the dominant species in the 90s now are very rare. So this is caused by the apparent uh, uh, competition. So that species is is benefit uh, or have benefits that the other species decline, and we are trying to understand the dynamic of how the decline of amphibians have changed the communities in the neotropic. Um, so this, this month, uh, some friends released this paper, if you want to look at how the, the PD fungus uh, is uh, in all the Costa Rican lowlands and the implication for conservation. So the, the thing is more complex than that, that we think. Uh, but the hope still remains. Uh, there are some rediscovery of species that we consider extinct. Uh, one problem we have is the legal extraction, for example, of the blue side leaf rock. So we have to fight this. We are fighting with right now uh, to include some species in cities. And unfortunately, the responsible tourism. Uh, for example, in the case of the Holder Stout. The, the toe that we are studying, those cars are, and this kind of activity, the unprotected lands uh, are threat for that species. So thank you for your attention. Uh, there is my contact and uh, I hope you, you enjoy the presentation about the amphibian of Costa Rica. Uh, I don't know. Harry, you can, you can change when you want. Harry, you can, you can change. Okay, thank you so much, Victor Acosta Chavez, amphibian biologist from Costa Rica, amphibian guide on the upcoming Save the Frogs Costa Rica Eco Tour, which you can learn about. Go to savethefrogs.com slash eco tours. Click through. If anyone has a question, let's take one or two questions if people have them. I know that we're over an hour. Thanks everyone for um, sticking around. Thanks so much to Victor. Great photos. And I'm sure we all know a lot more about Costa Rica's amphibians now. You're getting some feedback. Very nice talk. Thank you for an amazing presentation. Anyone out there have a specific question for Victor based on this presentation? And I know that a lot of questions came through from the registration, and maybe I will try to uh, make a separate um, way to answer all those questions. All right, so Stacy who has joined us on Save the Frogs Eco Tours in the past. Says, very informative presentation. Thank you so much. Will I be able to watch it again? Yes, we'll theoretically have a recording, and I will put it on the very same page that you registered on, and I will send out an announcement once it is available to be watched, and I do encourage you to share the video, share the web page, and also, all of you out there, it'd be really great if you know someone who wants to join the Save the Frogs Eco Tour and see lots of the amphibians that we learned about today. Please do tell your friends, colleagues, family about 
the Save the Frogs Eco Tour. All right, what are the main actions that Costa Ricans should take to help amphibian conservation? Victor, do you have anything to say about that for for Costa Ricans yeah. to do? Okay, yeah. Uh, there are, have been some efforts made with the, especially UCN in the past. We established the categories of threats that the amphibians, any species in Costa Rica uh, had. But uh, now we're facing different threats, for example, the illegal, illegal trade. And for sure, we need an arc. In the past, the, there was a, a tent to, 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 to build an arc for amphibians. Now we have uh, a small arc in the University of Costa Rica. Um, uh, this is uh, managed by, by Gilbert Alvarado, another, another frog biologist. But I think we need more. And also, for example, the problem uh, we're facing with the whole toad is uh, that the population is outside a uh, protected area. So we need support, we need to buy lands, uh, in the future, uh, very, very soon, uh, we are establishing an organization for uh, buy different lots, different uh, farms uh, to restrict the access to some population of very endangered species of toads and frogs in the country. And of course, we have to try to, to talk with the politicians uh, in order that they reduce the, the permission to produce pineapple. That what is a problem right now because politicians, uh, they are not convinced that pineapple is a problem and to reduce the, uh, the use of uh, pesticides that also uh, politicians sometimes are not convinced to reduce the use of, of pesticides even when when the biodiversity and the people is dying of that. So I don't know if I could res respond to your question. That was a lot, Victor, thanks. So everybody, careful of the pineapple you're buying. If you can buy organic yeah. pineapple, that goes a long way because then we know it wasn't sprayed or maybe it didn't come from Costa Rica. As far as land goes with the critical habitat you refer to do you have any idea what the cost of the land is per acre or per or per hectare yeah the, the problem we have in costa rica is the the land is is expensive so we have tried to buy or to convince organizations that buy lands for conservation but they say uh, by the price uh, that those lots cost to us in Costa Rica, we could buy a huge jungle in Guatemala or in the South uh, Asia. That's the problem. Uh, the, the price, I don't know, they, they change uh, depending on the area. And unfortunately for some species, those areas are popular by tourism and for building uh, luxury houses in the middle of the jungle. So for a Costa Rican, it's almost impossible to buy a land in Costa Rica. It's a problem we have now. So the only the only way is pricing money, for example, uh, for for buy specifically lands. All right. Maybe when you uh, have the uh, opportunity, you could find out the current cost of the land, which yeah. would be good to know. Okay. All right, let's close it out there. Thank you so much to Victor and thank you to everybody for attending. And I will send out an announcement once we have a recording of this online. And I hope to see lots of you emailing me about the Save the Frogs Costa Rica Eco Tour. And uh, please do share the video once you have it and info about the Save the Frogs Costa Rica Eco Tour, savethefrogs.com slash eco tours. All right, a final thank you to Victor and uh, goodbye, everybody. Have a fabulous day. Uh, thank you, Gary, and goodbye, everyone. Pura vida. All right, muchas gracias, Pura vida.